In this video, I'm going to be comparing two of the most popular cameras available today, the Nikon D3500 and the Canon T7 EOS 1500D. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I do photography tutorials. I share tips and tricks and do occasional gear reviews just like this one. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Now in this video, I'm gonna be comparing two of the most popular entry-level DSLR cameras, one from Nikon and one from Canon. Now there's never been a better time to get into photography. The range of cameras is huge. There's been massive advances in technology. And what you get now in terms of value for money is quite outstanding. So choosing a camera can be quite difficult. So in this video, head to head, the D3500, the Canon T7 1500D, which is the camera for you. Now I do wanna begin by saying that this video is not sponsored in any way by anybody. I purchased both of these cameras myself for use on my courses and workshops that I run here in Brisbane. But over the past few months, I've had the opportunity to use and test both of these cameras on a range of different subjects as diverse as sports to landscape, macro and night photography. I've also featured these cameras in some of the videos that I've put out on this channel. So it's fair to say that I know the cameras fairly well. Now to avoid any confusion, I just want to spend a moment talking about the name of this particular Canon camera that we're going to be featuring in this video. Here in Australia, where I'm based, this Canon camera is the EOS 1500D. But if you're watching this video in the United States, this very same camera is the Canon EOS Rebel T7. Now in Europe, it's known as the EOS 2000D, and in Japan, it's the KISS X90. The very same camera, but different names depending on in which part of the world you purchase the camera. Now, clearly this can be quite confusing. So for the sake of making this easier for me, from here onwards in this video, this is gonna be referred to as the Canon T7. Now, the first of these two cameras that I purchased was the Nikon D3500. That came as a kit with a standard 18 to 55 millimeter lens. And then a few months later, I picked up the T7 again as a kit with the 18 to 55 millimeter lens, which is a great starter lens if you're a beginner. Both of these cameras are entry level cameras aimed at the beginner. And in terms of cost, the price of these cameras is almost exactly the same. What's also interesting is on paper, in terms of specifications, these cameras are very, very similar again. So let's look at some of the things that set them apart. Now, one of the noticeable differences between these two cameras is the size. The Nikon D3500 is noticeably smaller and more compact than the Canon T7. Uh, they did redesign this camera. Um, compared to the previous model, it's got a completely redesigned grip. It's got a deeper grip, so it does feel really solid in the hand, which is, I think, a good thing. However, when using a camera over a longer period, I actually prefer the slightly bigger Canon T7, which has got a more rounded grip. It just felt a bit more comfortable in the hand. Now, in terms of weight difference, it's not huge, but it's worth a mention. The Nikon comes in at 365 grams compared to the Canon at 475 grams. And these are things you might want to you know, take into consideration. So in terms of uh, camera bags, the Nikon is going to need a smaller bag. It's a more compact body. It might fit in a shoulder bag or possibly even a handbag. The Canon T7 is a little bit bulkier. It's not a massive difference, but worth mentioning. If you're going to go traveling, for example, the Nikon could be the better travel companion. Now let's take a look at the back of the camera and the layout of the buttons. Now there's a good test when picking up a camera and that is the one-handed test, which basically means when you hold a camera with just the one hand, find out how many buttons you can actually reach with your forefinger or your thumb. If you can reach most of the main buttons, then I think it's a well laid out camera. And both of these cameras in terms of layout are very similar. All the buttons have been moved over to the right hand side of the LCD, which is a good thing. With the Canon T7, I can turn the main control dial easily on top of the camera. It's just behind the shutter button. And this allows me to make changes to the camera settings like the shutter speed, for example. Uh, the exposure compensation marked AV on the back allows me to change not just exposure compensation, but also aperture values. Uh, there's an ISO button on the back of the camera, I can reach that. And there's a Q button which allows me to change some of the features 
of the camera without having to go into the menu. So the Canon T7 I think is a really nicely laid out camera. The Nikon D3500 replaced the Nikon D3400 and as well as changing the shape of the body, we already talked about the grip, they also changed the button layout. On the D3400 the buttons were on the left and the right hand side of the LCD screen but I'm pleased to see that in the redesign Nikon, much like the Canon, have decided to move all the buttons over to the right of the body. So again when you're doing the one handed test you can reach most of the buttons. The main control dial is easy to turn. This can change the uh, shutter speed or depending on which mode also the aperture and um, the exposure compensation is a bit tricky to, to, to hold down and turn the dial um, so I'm not as keen on that to be honest the I button on the back of the camera is the equivalent of the Q button on the Canon allowing you to change some of the functions but one thing that's really missing on the D3500 is a dedicated ISO button the D3400 had it the D3500 doesn't. So if you want to change ISO, you actually have to press the I button, select ISO on the back of the camera and change it that way, which is a bit slow and a bit sluggish. I think that's a bit of a shame. Both cameras feature a three inch fixed LCD screen for reviewing images, changing camera settings, and of course using live view as an alternative to looking through the viewfinder. I personally preferred the layout of the Nikon display a particularly useful feature is the animated aperture graphic, which is a really useful feature for beginners. Taking a look at the top of the camera, you'll find the camera mode dial, which allows you to select which camera mode you're going to use. Both cameras are fairly similar here. They offer full automatic, of course, because they're entry level cameras alongside the usual scene modes, such as portraits, sports, landscape, macros covered here as well. And those can be very useful, but you don't have very much creative control. But of course, both of these cameras being DSLR cameras also come with the creative modes. So you've got manual, aperture priority, shutter priority and program mode if you want to get a little bit more into the settings and playing around and being more creative with your cameras. Nikon for beginners also offers a really cool guide mode. So the guide mode on the Nikon allows us to choose from a series of preset options based on popular subjects. Photography at night, night portrait, portraits, moving subjects and so on. So if we want to take some photos of flowers for example we can select the close-up option Press OK, menu, and you're done. So now let's briefly turn our attention to lenses. Now the great thing about buying either a Nikon or a Canon camera is that they've both been around for a long time and therefore there are lots of lens options to choose from should you wish to add another lens to your kit further down the track. For now though, let's just concentrate on the lenses that came with these cameras. Now both of these cameras came with the 18 to 55 millimeter zoom lens, which is a pretty standard kit lens, but actually is a pretty good lens. Now the Nikon version also includes vibration reduction, also known as VR, which is a really good feature that helps to stabilize the glass elements inside the lens when you're hand holding the camera, which is really cool. Now Canon offer an equivalent feature, it's called image stabilization or IS, but it wasn't actually a feature found in this kit lens. Now also in terms of the Nikon lens, there's a button on the side which to use you have to press and zoom the lens out. So this camera actually won't work until you've pressed the, the, the button in and fully extended the lens. Um, the, I think the idea behind this is that when you're putting the camera away, it makes the lens a bit more compact and therefore takes up less space in your camera bag, which I guess is a nice feature. But after using this for a while, I did find that having to, you know, extend the lens, press the button every time I use the camera, I found it to be a little bit annoying. So personally, I would take a slightly bigger lens over one that has the button. Now let's talk about image quality. Now the Canon T7 and Nikon D3500 are both cropped sensor cameras, which means they both use the very common APS-C sized sensor, which is a sensor that is larger than you would find in a compact camera or of course your smartphone, but not as big as a full frame sensor that you would find in more advanced or professional cameras. But both cameras offer really good quality images using a sensor that is 24 megapixels. Resolution wise, both cameras are exactly the same. As I've already said, I've used both cameras extensively and here's a small selection of images from both cameras. All these images were shot with the standard kit lens. 
Starting with the Nikon, let's now take a look at how a higher ISO affects image quality from each camera. Let's zoom in on the subject and you will see here that at 800 ISO, 1600 and 3200 digital noise is clearly present but not a major issue but by the time we get to 6400 ISO the image is barely usable at 12,800 we really lose the sharpness and at 25,600 ISO the image is pretty much unusable now for the Canon, and the first thing to note is the image looks much more vibrant. At 800 ISO, digital noise is unnoticeable, and it's not until we get to 3200 that it starts to be a problem. But even at 6400, the results are really impressive. The T7 has a maximum ISO of 12,800, where the image now clearly looks soft, lacks definition, and the digital noise is a real problem. With a side-by-side -side comparison, it's clear to see the Canon image is certainly more vibrant and at ISO 6400, the Canon clearly is the better image. Remember, however, ISO is something to use sparingly. Now it's worth mentioning that generally when taking photos in low light or at night time, usual practice is to decrease the ISO, so lower the ISO, and then use a slower or longer shutter speed. Now when you're doing this, because the shutter's open longer, you're going to use a tripod, and for that reason both of these cameras of course offer standard tripod mounts, so they will work with any standard tripod. At the bottom of the Nikon camera you can also access the battery here, and the S D card has a separate slot on the side and I actually prefer that Nikon have separated the SD slot and the battery compartment. I think that's a better design personally um, because with the Canon camera if you've got a QR tripod plate mounted to the bottom of your camera sometimes it can actually block the slot so I can't actually get to the little compartment here with this mounted to the camera and that's a little bit annoying because in there is not just the battery but also the SD card. So in terms of design it's a bit of a, I think it's a bit of a frustration with the Canon, I think the Nikon wins there. Now if you're keen on taking photos at night time, maybe you want to get into astrophotography and it's certainly worth spending a moment talking about remotes. Both cameras offer the option to use apps and a smartphone to remotely control the camera. And this is good because it helps to eliminate any unnecessary shake. Now Nikon use Bluetooth, Canon use built-in Wi-Fi, which is far superior and much, much quicker. Now it has to be said that out of the two apps, the Canon app is much, much better than the Nikon app. I found through experience that the Nikon app is really quite clunky and awkward to use, and the Canon was much quicker, much more intuitive to use. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of using a smartphone to control my camera. I prefer to use a separate remote. Now, sadly, with the Nikon camera, there is no other option. If you're not going to use your smartphone and set up the Bluetooth, there's no way to remotely control the Nikon D3500. But with the Canon camera, if you don't want to use your smartphone to control the camera, there is an option to use an external remote and plug it into the side of the camera. So the Canon definitely wins here. Now my preferred way of using a camera is still up at the eye looking through the viewfinder, but of course both cameras also offer a live view option, which when turned on means that you get a live view of what the camera sees on the LCD screen. Let's compare these. Starting with the Nikon, we select LV or live view using the LV lever, and of course the camera gives us a live view of what the sensor is seeing or reading. To change the settings, we can press the I button and choose from the options available. That's nice and easy. And to take a picture, you would press the shutter button halfway down to focus. You hear a beep, you get a green square, subject is in focus. Let's now test how quickly the focus works in live view. Now the subject is out of focus because it's further away. Press the shutter button halfway down. Almost instantly, the camera refocuses. Bring the subject closer. Again, it's out of focus, press the shutter button halfway down. And again, the Nikon's pretty quick at focusing using the live view mode. Live view on the Canon T7 works in much the same way. There's a button on the back to turn live view on. We get a live view on the LCD screen as you would expect. We can also change uh, functions by pressing the Q button and selecting from the different options on the back. And again, to focus, we press the button halfway down. But the big difference here between the Canon and the Nikon 
is that the cannon is much slower to focus. Now the fact that the Canon T7 is a bit slow to focus in live view is of course not going to be an issue if your subject isn't moving. So if you're taking a picture of a building or maybe doing landscape photography, then you can afford to wait around a little while whilst it focuses. But it is going to be a major issue if you're taking a picture of something that's moving. So if you're taking a photo of pets, kids, sports, then it is a big issue. But to be fair, I would generally recommend turning live view off when shooting moving subjects anyway, and just look through the viewfinder. When you look through the viewfinder, you can see the camera's focus points. Now, whilst we're talking about focus points, the Canon camera offers nine focus points, but the Nikon camera here has 11. To change focus points on the Canon T7, we press this button on the back of the camera, then turn the dial to select individual focus points or we can leave the uh, selection up to the camera, which is auto selection, not one I would recommend. On the Nikon camera, to switch focus points from auto to manual, press I, select auto focus area mode, choose the single point autofocus option, press OK, and you'll see the display has now changed. You can now move the focus points and select them individually using the main selector on the back of the camera. Easy. Now another feature where the Nikon camera does slightly have the edge over the Canon camera is when using the continuous shooting mode. Now this is very popular with sports photographers and simply allows you to hold the shutter button down whilst the camera keeps taking photos. It's pretty cool. So let's try it on the Canon camera. The T7 shoots at three frames per second. Let's compare that with the Nikon camera. Now clearly faster, this is five frames per second. Now whilst three frames per second versus five frames per second doesn't sound like a massive difference here, trust me, if you're shooting a moving subject like your kid's sports day or your dog running around the dog park, it could be the difference between getting the photo and not getting the photo. Now, if you're a regular viewer to my channel, you'll know that mostly everything's photography related. I don't do so much about the video side of things, but of course these cameras are not just great for taking still photos. You can also shoot video with them as well. So let's briefly touch on this. Both cameras give you the ability to shoot high definition video at 30 and 24 frames a second, with the Nikon also offering HD quality at 60 frames per second and a couple of other options as well. In terms of audio recording, the audio recording for both cameras is sadly in mono and this is done via the built-in microphone and I'll talk more about that in a moment. But how did they perform? Testing both cameras out on a bright and very windy afternoon in my garden you can see that as soon as I move the camera the Nikon does a reasonable job of refocusing. The colours look realistic and the camera handles the bright contrasty conditions really well. Trying to take photos or video of our puppy is never easy but again the Nikon does well considering the movement and my shaky camera work. Here in the shade the softer light works much better. Now by comparison, the Canon T7 does have a tendency to oversaturate the colors and slightly overexpose. The camera also shows no signs of refocusing when I move the camera to a different subject. And again, with the dog in the sunshine or the shade, once again, it's the focus that sadly lets the Canon camera down. Now to test out the audio quality, I'm recording this video with the Nikon D3500 and my voice is being recorded by a separate microphone that's going straight into my computer. But if I clip my fingers, this mic is now off and you're now hearing the audio recorded by the internal mic on the Nikon D3500. How does it sound? Let's now compare this to the Canon T7. So now recording with the Canon T7, how does the audio sound? Probably not too great, so let's switch back to this mic right now and I'm sure that sounds much better. Look, I wanted to demonstrate to you how bad the audio can be when using an internal microphone. When I'm doing my YouTube videos, I'm using an external mic connected to my Canon 80D. Sad news is that neither the Canon T6 nor the Nikon D3500 give you that option. There is no way that you can plug an external mic into those cameras. So you have to put up with the sound quality, which is not only pretty poor, but also it's mono. 
So whilst you can take great video with these cameras, sadly the focus issues and the really poor audio quality lets them down. So if video is an important factor for you, I would probably look at a camera that has better autofocus and the ability to plug in an external microphone. My recommendation would be to check out the Canon SL3. That's a great camera. I actually reviewed it myself a few months ago. I'll put a link up here and also in the description below this video so you can check it out. So the Canon T7 and Nikon D3500 are clearly not professional cameras, but that's not where they're aimed. They're aimed at beginners. Now, they may not be pro cameras, but that doesn't mean you can't take amazing photos with them, because you can, and I've proved it. I often say in my videos, it's more about how you use the gear, not so much the gear itself. So what I want to talk about now is I want to talk about some of the key features that I like about each camera and some of the things I don't like about each camera and why. And let's start with the Nikon. Definitely the size is a big plus. It's nice and compact. Actually, I believe it's the smallest DSLR currently out there. And this is, means it's great for traveling. It's not very heavy. It will fit in a small bag ideal. The next thing is the improved layout. Um, compared to the Nikon D3400 before it, uh, Nikon have done a really good job of redesigning the body and also the button layout. It's much easier to use. Uh, the animated aperture display on the back of the camera, as a beginner, this might not seem like a big deal, but as you learn more about cameras and particularly apertures, which can be confusing, the animated display on the back of the camera makes it so much easier to understand and get your head around how the aperture works. The Nikon also offers 11 focus points, giving us more flexibility and five frames a second if you're photographing moving subjects means you're more likely to nail the shot. And also something I haven't mentioned yet in this video is the battery performance. Nikon estimate that you can get up to 1550 shots on a fully charged battery with the Nikon D3500 compared to just 500 on the Canon T7. So there's a lot of things to like about the D3500. Now for things I don't like about the Nikon D3500, starting with the ISO button or lack of ISO button. Now with the previous camera, the Nikon D3400, there was a function button on the side of the camera and when you held it down and turned the dial on the back of the camera, you could change the ISO if you wanted to. Great feature. Sadly, with the D3500, which replaced this camera, they've dropped it. You don't have a dedicated ISO button now. It doesn't mean you can't change it, you can, it's just not as easy as it used to be, which I think is a bit of a shame. Another feature that's missing is the ability to use an external remote. Easy with the previous camera, can't do it with the current camera, the D3500. Again, I think that's a bit of a shame. Now that doesn't mean you can't remotely activate the camera, you can, but now you're forced to use the Nikon app. Now, I found through experience that the Nikon app is quite clunky. I'm not a big fan of it. Plus it uses Bluetooth to connect to the D3500, uh, which again, isn't ideal. So I'm not a big fan of that. So those are my grumbles when it comes to this camera. So let's move on to the Canon T7. Things I love about this camera. Buttons, there's buttons pretty much for everything. You wanna change your focus points, you wanna change your white balance, you wanna change your ISO, there's a button for just about every feature and this makes it a joy to use and it's easier to use. Remote, if you want to use an external remote with this camera, you can. You can purchase it separately, it plugs into the side of the camera and of course this is great for long exposures, night photography and astrophotography. Plus, as an option, if you don't want to buy an external remote, you can, of course, use the Canon app via your smartphone and connect that to the camera as well. And I found that the Canon app compared to the Nikon app works a treat. Plus, the Canon cameras use Wi-Fi, whereas the Nikon uses Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi is so much quicker. So those are my main plus points when it comes to the Canon T7. I have got a few grumbles, they're not major ones. First one is focus points. The Canon T7 has nine focus points compared to 11 focus points with the Nikon D3500. It's a difference of two, so it's not a major grumble. Continuous shooting. If you wanna do sports and shoot moving subjects, you can only shoot at a maximum frame rate of three frames per second with the Canon T7 compared to five frames per second with the Nikon D3500. That is a fair difference. So it might not be the ideal camera if you're doing sports. Having to put the SD card into the bottom of the camera where the battery compartment is, is another grumble, not a major one. 
battery life. For some, this could be a deal breaker. With the Canon camera, you're going to get on average about 500 shots to a fully charged battery, but with the Nikon D3500, it's claimed you can get up to 1500 shots with a fully charged battery, and that's quite a big difference. So which is the best camera, the Nikon D3500 or the Canon T6? Well, it's quite hard to separate these cameras because they are so, so similar. Certainly in terms of price, they both retail at almost the same price, about $400 in the US, which is about $700 here in Australia. And they both offer great value for money. They are really good cameras. In terms of image quality, again, they're very similar. I've done tests, I've taken photos, I've compared the images, and there isn't much much difference in terms of image quality. Remember, the sensor is the same megapixel count, same resolution. Ease of use, Canon definitely has the edge here. Those extra buttons mean that the camera is a lot easier to use. You can change the key feature of the camera a lot easier on the Canon than you can on the Nikon. Live view, if this is a feature you're gonna use quite a bit, here the Nikon blows the Canon out of the water. The Canon is really slow and sluggish at focusing when using live view, whereas the Nikon is pretty quick. So when deciding which camera suits you the best, it's important, I think, to consider not just what you wanna use it for now, but what you see yourself taking photos of in the near future. You want a camera that you could grow into. If you don't know too much about cameras and you want something out of the box that's easy and intuitive to use, then my vote would be for the Nikon camera. Features like the animated aperture display and the guide mode are really aimed at the beginner, and it's a very easy camera to pick up and use. If you're quite keen on doing landscape photography, maybe doing low light and nighttime photography, then I think here the Canon is the clear winner. And that's mostly because you have an option of using an external remote. And if you don't want to use that, the app and the Wi-Fi that's built into the camera works really, really well. Now, that's not to say you can't do nighttime photography or landscapes with the Nikon. It's just the Canon makes it a little bit easier. If sports photography, um, uh, taking photos of kids, pets, and moving subjects is your thing, then Nikon is definitely the one to go for here. Five frames per second, continuous burst mode, 11 focus points, um, extended battery life, make it a no-brainer. So to sum up, both of these cameras are great and I would be happy as a beginner starting out with either of these cameras. But I hope this video has helped you make a more informed decision about which camera suits you and your type of photography the best. If you've enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel, new videos every single week. And down below, you can leave comments, suggestions and any questions you may have. I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.